Could you give a description of Project Aerodynamic and Operation Red Sox concerning the long link between the CIA and Ukrainian fascists to help me get a better understanding of the historical context of the current situation? Sure. Once upon a time, <coughs> there was a fascist scum-sucking pig named Stepan Bandera. He had other fascist some scum-sucking pigs that they gathered together in something called the Organization of Ukrainian Nationalists. These are white supremacists who um, got off on murdering people. In fact, when Stepan Bandera was arrested in 1936, I believe, in Poland for murdering people, um, on the, the stand, he basically said, I'm willing to kill millions of innocent people to achieve the objective of Ukrainian nationalism. Um, so now we know his mindset. Uh, the Banderas modeled themselves off after the, um, the German uh, Nazi uh, movement organization, closely aligned in terms of their thinking, so close that when the Germans uh, moved into Poland in 1939, uh, the Banderists were with them. I mean, and then when the Germans moved into uh, what is now Western Ukraine, but at that time was uh, part of uh, Poland taken over by the, the Soviets in 1939, um, one only has to take a look at the Rape of Lvov. There's some wonderful photographs, very entertaining stuff of uh, banderists chasing down uh, Jewish women half naked because they're going to rape them and then they're going to kill them because that's what banderists do for fun. That's a fun afternoon. Get drunk, rape and murder Jewish women. And they did it by the tens of thousands because they're really good people. Um, they formed death units. They roamed around and slaughtered uh, the Jews. And then when the opportunity came in 1943, for instance, the fact is, I think maybe just the other day was the anniversary of the Volin massacre. It's a wonderful thing. It's a good time. They really had fun killing 110,000 Poles. Uh, that's what Banderists do. They're murderers. Um, the Banderists also roamed around Belarus. There's a horrible movie that the Russians made, uh, and I can't remember the title of it right now, but it's based about a boy experiencing um, this, this kind of stuff, uh, the, the death squads running around. Uh, it's a true story how uh, they, they stuffed all the members of a village into a barn and set it on fire and burned anybody who dared jump out. Um, true story. <clears throat> Banderists. So the, here are the worst people in the world, because they literally are the worst people in the world working for the worst regime in the world. That's the Nazi regime. Um, and now the Nazis, they have this organization. It's an intelligence organization on the Eastern Front. It's run by a guy named Galen. And uh, General Galen uh, is using the Banderists as part of his resistance movement. They hunt down uh, saboteurs. They hunt down Russian partisans. They're working hand in glove with the Nazis. But as the Nazis re retreat, the Banderists stay behind as a stay behind element. It's a concept of unconventional warfare, guerrilla warfare. So they become guerrilla fighters for the Nazis, by the way, because that's who they work for. And their job while they're doing this is not only to kill Red Army soldiers, but they slaughter Russians. They slaughter Poles. Why? Because they view the Russians and the Poles as subhumans. Uh, because they're Nazis. And so Galen's running these guys, organizing them, keeping the stay-behind element working. And then the war ends. Germany loses. And Galen surrenders to the Allies, the Americans. And instead of taking Galen and putting him up against the wall and shooting him, as we should do, because he's a war criminal, a Nazi, instead we take him and his entire organization, murderous Nazi thugs, and we say, you now work for us. And all those Bandera scum that you've been running who are murdering Poles, murdering uh, Russians, they're now going to work for us. The OSS, which became the CIA. And that's what this is all about. The CIA used Galen organization to coordinate with the Banderists who are operating in Poland, operating in Ukraine as a stay-behind force to fight the Soviets. And from 1945 until about 1953, 1954, there is a very violent war. How violent, you might ask? I don't know. During that period of time, around a quarter of a million Russians were killed. That's a lot. Around 48,000 of them were Russian soldiers, which tells you that there's a lot of fighting going on. Around 200,000 Banderists were killed, too. This is big fighting, guys. This isn't little stuff. This is big stuff. Now, about 1953, 1954, 
the Soviets finally get the upper hand and the Banderist resistance is stomped out. About 150,000 of the Banderists are captured by the Soviets. Off they go to the Gulag, where they belong, by the way. Um, you know, everybody's like, oh, the Gulag was full of innocent people. Not in this case, guilty, guilty, guilty. Sent away 25 year sentences. The other about 150,000, 200,000 fled to the West, where they were welcomed with open arms by the Germans, the Nazis, who loved the Banderists, by Americans. Remember, I just want to remind people 60 miles away in beautiful Ellenville, New York, there's a monument called Heroes Park. And in Heroes Park, there are statues to five Nazi thugs, including Stepan Bandera and people of his ilk. And every summer, the wonderful Ukrainian American people come together dressed in their brown Nazi uniforms because they're modeled after Nazi uniform. They carry wonderful little Nazi torches and they hold up the portrait of Stepan Bandera, a Nazi, and they sing songs glorifying him. It happens every year here in America because that's where the Banderas fled to. They do the same thing in, um, in Canada. That's so effective in Canada, in fact, that their deputy prime minister, uh, Christia Freeland, is a Nazi. Her grandfather wrote a newspaper for the Nazis. She supports them. She was trained in the Nazi youth movement. That's that. Um, in around 1956, um, in the, after the death of Stalin, uh, Nikita Khrushchev decided that he was going to rehabilitate people because, of course, Joseph Stalin was evil and bad and everything he did was wrong, including apparently putting 150,000 Bandera scum into the gulag. And so they were released and they were released into Ukrainian society. And what happens when Bandera scum comes back is they go into the shadows, they wait, and then they start to infiltrate their way up to the top. They start to pressure people. They start to uh, get promoted themselves until they start taking over the reins of power. And who is running all of this? You got it. The CIA is running all of this. They're back there in the United States playing their little games in their computer, using Galen organization to stay behind unit, to maintain connectivity. They're paying the uh, diasporas that are in Germany, Australia, America, and Canada to maintain connectivity, all this connectivity going on. They're coordinating the resurrection of the Banderist ideology inside Western Ukraine and all of Ukraine with the goal of eventually ripping Ukraine from the Soviet Union, thereby weakening the rest of the Soviet Union, causing it to collapse. It's been a long time American strategic objective. And gosh, in 1991, it gets to happen. The CIA said, we won. So they stopped directly funding the Banderas because they didn't need to anymore. There's no need for a CIA covert operation because Ukraine is now independent. And so the diasporas take over and start funding the Banderas who are in Western Ukraine using money from say the National Endowment for Democracy and other non-governmental organization sources. And they do that building them up to maintain the connectivity so in 2014, when the CIA decided that it was time to oust the constitutionally elected uh, president, Viktor Yanukovych, and replace him with something America could support, the only thing America could support are the Banderists. And so they rise up and they take over, they're in place, and they've been in control ever since. Now, people say, well, wait a minute, Scott, Zelensky wasn't a Banderist. No, I said they were in control. Control means, for instance, when Zelensky gets elected president and says things like, I want to do something that's against the Banderas, they pull him aside and say, you'll be hanging by the neck until dead on the main avenue in Kiev if you even think about doing that. They're in control. The CIA is in control. We've been supporting Banderas scum since 1945. I hope that was a summary enough.